Hello, it's Jay. Welcome to my channel. Today, let's discuss wide feet. So I see this question a lot in hiking forums. Someone will ask, hey, what shoe recommendations do you have for someone with wide feet, extra wide feet, especially 4E, which is not wide, extra wide. And all the time on these forums, I always see tons of responses where people just basically suggest things that they wear, but they don't even have wide feet or extra wide feet. They just wear normal shoes. So I don't want them getting any of that advice and wasting money. I've tried all those wide shoes as well. All the, like I've tried the ultra lone peaks. Uh, I tried it at nine and a half. Now I used to run marathons back in 2007 to 2010 or so. And I wore eight and a half, four E that's extra wide. Now two E is wide. I don't know why they decided to use 2E and 4E, but then there's standard. Most people are standard. And it turns out uh, Asians on average have wider feet than everyone else. So I have wider feet than everyone else. In fact, they're extra wide. And I had to wear eight and a half 4E and that worked out great for me through hundreds, maybe thousands of miles ran. And then when it came to hiking, I actually wear nine and a half four E. In fact, when I through hiked the PCT in 2018, I wore nine and a half four E's the entire time and it worked out great. It kept about an inch in the front of my toe. So my toe didn't hit the shoe at all. And the width at times felt tighter than I would have liked. So I actually had to tie my shoelaces a unique way. I will get to that later. But 4E people need to wear extra wide shoes. Do not wear ultras. Ultras, I don't know, I've told people before was, uh, I don't know if you watch Seinfeld at all. You know how Jerry used to buy, what was it, like 32 pants and then scratch out the two and put a zero on there because for appearances. And they usually say that in America, if you buy like a 32 pants these days, you're not really getting a 32, you're getting like a 34, 36. They just call it 32. And that's why when you buy belts from uh, certain manufacturers, you have to measure your own waist and not buy a belt that matches the pant size that you wear. So I find that kind of funny. I kind of think that's what's happening with shoes. It's for some reason, I think it's people think it's embarrassing to have wide feet. So the shoes have gotten a little wider, but stayed the same. Or at least that's what I think is going on with ultras is they're a little wider in the toe box area, but they're not called wides, they're standards. So I guess to make people feel better. And as you know, making people feel better is more important than actually being comfortable physically comfortable anyway. So ultras, I tried them actually a size bigger, nine and a half, and they just were way too tight in the toe box as well, including everywhere else. There was one Salomon brand that had a white shoe. I tried that, ordered nine and a half, and that was also too tight. <laughs> I think I just wound up doing a loop it inadvertently. So anyway, I tried the Salomon that came in the wide and that was just way too tight. It turns out that the wide was more for the forefoot, but it was not for the midstep or the heel at all. So it was much too tight there. So I didn't wear those at all. I tried them a little. And now I have found with all my experimenting, all the different shoes I bought, I even tried a variety of Moab hiking shoes. And they actually worked okay because they have wide versions. And uh, they actually worked okay as long as I laced my shoes differently. I had to do it for those because they weren't necessarily wide enough for extra wide. Now I found that there are only two major brands that sell 4E. And it's important to, I think if you're going to go on a through hike, try to stick with the major brand because they're easier to find. Although. You're never going to find 4E at stores. Um, 
even during my marathon running days, I actually had to go to a running store. I used to order them from a local store. Uh, they cost more than just buying them from Amazon. But, you know, supporting the local store thing. But they never had my size. I always had to special order them. But if they sell A6, they may be able to special order them for you as well. And Amazon does have constant supply of like A6 and New Balance in extra wide sizes. So yeah, those are the two brands, A6 and New Balance. They seem to have several models that are 4E, not all of them. And they have several trail runners that are 4E as well. And at least in A6, I know there's two different, the Venture and the Sonoma. And the Venture 7 is what they currently sell. You can kind of find the Venture 6. That's what I actually wore the entire PCT, is the Venture 6. Um, you can kind of find it, but not really. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm losing track of, I think I know where I am. Okay, let's go, let's go left. And with the New Balance, I know there are several models that come in extra wide that are trail runners, but I can't remember them. I actually stopped wearing New Balance. Um, they had one model with the Vibrams insole, so I thought it would give it a lot more durability, but when I bought it, it seems like the tongue part of the shoe, it was really thin fabric. It wasn't cushioned, and it actually, the top part kind of cut into the tendon on the top of my foot, so I stopped wearing that. And I was worried with the Asics that it wasn't Vibram, so I thought it would just wear out quickly on a through hike. But it turned out I had to replace my shoes maybe every 500 miles, just like everyone else. Five to 700 miles I had to replace them, and it was mostly the cushion that wore out. The soles on the bottom actually lasted quite a while, so I'd say the A6 Venture 6s did a great job for me. In fact, I'm wearing 6s right now, and uh, I have 7s back home. Uh, anytime they're on sale, I actually buy another pair just because I know I'll eventually wear them. So if you've been wearing extra wide shoes and want to get into hiking, but you just kind of haven't because you couldn't find the right shoes, first off, you don't need special shoes to go hiking. Unless it's really specific, you can just wear any shoes and go out there. They're gonna get muddy. I found trail runners generally because they come in darker colors, so they hide the dirt better. And generally they have better soles on the bottom to give you better grip as you go up or down. Um, there are some like Vibram varieties that give you better grip on wet rocks. But if you're just getting into hiking, just get on the trails and uh, any old shoe should work for you. The one big sad thing is if you go to an REI, like people always say go there, if you're gonna start hiking, they'll get you set up. They'll, they don't have shoes for you. If you wear 4E, they have nothing for you. Every time I've gone into one, at most, they have maybe one model wide, but there's nothing extra wide. There's nothing that'll fit you there. Maybe it's changed in the last year, but every time I've gone before, there's never been anything. In fact, one time they said, oh, Solomon's gonna come out with the wide, but I bought those later online and they just didn't fit either. So uh, I would avoid the big box stores I would go, yes, Amazon. That's where I get all the shoes now, is because they sell Asics in my size in extra wide. And every once in a while they're on sale, I add them to a wish list and I check. And when they're on sale, I buy a, pi a pair. And I just do that every once in a while. And New Balance, they also sell my size and extra wides. But I've switched to Asics pretty much completely now so that's all I wear unfortunately with boots I'm still not sure which one to get for boots I just wear trail runners for every occasion <laughs> although I probably shouldn't sometimes here's a little list of all my Amazon purchases of shoes over the last four years or so actually over the last 13 years and you'll see from 2007 to 2010 they're mostly white because they were running road running shoes and then they switched over in 2014 to darker shoes because that's when I started walking trails and hiking. So from 2014 on, 
It's just a whole lot of ASICs, tons of ASICs. And then I tried out the Miro Moab at FSTs. I tried it on Lone Peak. Uh, a Solomon I tried, but it's not in the list there. A few different varieties of New Balance and different models of ASICs. And then I finally got to the ones I like, which were the Venture 6s. One thing to keep in mind too is uh, not a lot of hikers understand this but hardcore runners know, but shoes come in varieties of support. What they do is offset pronation, overpronation, over or no pronation. And what, you do, what happens when your foot settles down, it actually rolls in a little. And if you get the wrong type of shoe and say you needed a shoe that provides more support, every time you walk, your feet roll in too much, and you can actually, I actually saw one person walking. I don't know how he could walk. His feet were so taped up though because of the blisters from it. But his, he was over so much. He's going to have problems further down. What happens is if you don't wear the shoe with the proper level of support, for the first few hundred miles, things would be dandy. But then over time, various bones like your hip, knee, ankles, they're all going to start to have problems. So it's important to wear the right level of support. There are a variety of tests out there you can do to see how high your arches are, which kind of determines what level of support you have. You wet your foot and you put on a piece of paper and you can kind of see whether your feet are flat or whether you have high arches or average. Mine's average now. So uh, uh, the Venture 6 is for a neutral pronation. Generally though, I should wear stability. So what I do is I actually replace the insoles in them. Of course, because uh, if I do not replace the insoles in them, I actually start getting the plantar fasciitis pain. Now back in 2004, um, I was in Iraq my first time. I, I didn't know what was going on at the time. I was 32 maybe. I'd get up out of my little cot and feeling fine but as soon as i stand up it was just piercing pain through mostly my right foot but both feet and i'd just have to stand there for a while <laughs> and just get over it and then after a while of stretching it it gets it goes away and back then we had our fancy schmancy internet cafe where it took we only had 30 minute allotments and it took me 30 minutes just to type in the symptoms and figure out what it was and it took me days before I was able to finally actually put in an Amazon order for new insoles. And it was the Superfeet Greens I decided on because they were one of the only insoles that came in wide. Now their insoles are wide, but they actually fit extra wide feet perfectly fine. In fact, I'm wearing them now. So I've been wearing those like crazy. That and another brand called Power Step. I have the links below. But they also sell insoles and wide, and they're almost the exact same shape and size as the Superfeet. It's kind of like ripoffs. I have found the power steps. The material on the top doesn't last quite as long as the Superfeet on a through hike level type thing. But uh, for day to day use, it should be fine. And they are a little cheaper. But definitely add them to a wish list and check for sales. Because when you see sales, get them, but because sometimes they get marked off quite a bit. In Iraq, I finally got the Superfeet a month later after I ordered them. And they were they worked out great. And that was in 2004. And ever since then, I've been wearing them and I still wear them. And I, I love them. And there's no more plantar fasciitis pain. There's, it hasn't, I haven't gotten any of that on the PCT at all. So I definitely recommend them if you have those. Some people don't like them, so it's good to try a pair and then maybe hike 100 miles total. I don't know, <laughs> just kind of guessing. See how they feel for you and then determine if it works out. The uh, One of the reasons I love the Superfeet is I wear nine and a half extra wide shoes and the Superfeet, I believe the mediums, they fit right in there. I don't have to trim anything. I used to have to trim the fronts uh, when I wore eight and a halfs, but if I wore nine and a half, <laughs> I just shove in there. So, works out okay. 
So if you get stability shoes, they actually form to a medium arch really well. So you can actually run with the inserts they have in them and everything is fine, you can hike in them. But if you get like neutral shoes, which Adventure uh, 7s are, they are not completely flat, but pretty flat. So if you have arches and you don't wear them, you're gonna actually put a lot of strain on them. Um, you're gonna need some kind of insert that'll help support your arch. So that's why I opted for the Super Feet. They actually have a plastic mold to them right in the arch. So it gives it a good amount of support. So if you need stability, they actually provide enough support if you stick them in a flat shoe. And so you can get away with getting neutral shoes or flat shoes if you need more stability and support to them. One thing of note with the insoles as well is if you get narrow insoles, I don't know if anybody else with wide feet has had my problem, but one time I got custom orthotics because that was worth a shot, right? They made them with the regular width insoles. So what happened was on the outside of my foot, I actually eventually got a hot spot along the entire outside of the foot. It eventually became a blister because I took it easy for a while. But if you were off hiking, it could turn into a full-blown huge blister. If you if I wore that during a like multi-day hike, it would have been a, a bad problem. So make sure the insoles you buy actually fit your feet. Otherwise, you'll have other problems besides just a matter of support or cushion. Yeah, in the Marines, I don't know about the other branches, but the boots they issued us were completely flat. And we used to buy insoles to put in, but they were just flat foam cushion that actually, they were cheap. So they only lasted like a month before they flattened out again. So I think it's important if you have arches that need some level of support, don't just wear flat feet, wear, get insoles with some kind of arch support. Very important, I think. You don't necessarily even have to have extra wide feet to wear extra wide shoes. Some people have bunions, which is the joint and like the big toe and it gets inflamed and it swells. And it's actually a double whammy for you because as it swells, it rubs more on your shoe. So there's more friction and more damage. So you need bigger shoes. So if you have something like that, go wide. There's another one where it's called a Taylor's Bunion and that's on the little toe. And I actually have a little bit of that. So the extra wide shoes actually alone aren't enough for my left foot. What I have to do is tie my shoelaces a different way. There was a chart that went around showing how to tie your shoelaces depending on where it's loose or where it's tight on your feet. I will post a picture and put a link for the graphic somewhere else so you can kind of go to it and look at it longer. But the gist of it is instead of crisscrossing at the hot points, tight points, you go sideways and there's less lateral pull. So it kind of gives that part of your foot a break. And I find that works amazingly well. Uh, I been wearing shoelaces like that for years now and it helps a lot. My left foot is actually slightly wider than my right foot so it's nice I can buy the same shoe and then lace it up differently and they fit great. So I'll show you how to lace them up. Just as an extra note I thought I would also show you how I tie my shoelaces back when I was running a lot. I that's all I did was think about running and read about running. And on a Runner's World magazine, they showed a new way to tie your shoelaces. And I learned two different ways to tie your shoelaces from that article. One will pretty much confuse you, I think, if you see it. If you haven't seen that before, it would be very confusing. And the other way, I think, is a very practical way to tie your shoelaces. And uh, yeah, check them out next year. This is another way that you can actually lace up your shoes if you have wider feet and it gives you a little more slack depending on where you choose. And I prefer here to get it right at the edge there of the pinky toe bone and the winds and the inside there, but it's mostly for this part, but I have two. You can actually do this twice and give it even more slack. What happens is when you tie your shoelaces really tight here, it'll tighten up here, but this part will always stay a little looser than the others. So it, this part, right here, this little plastic part that pulls, gives it some slack. 
and this part will also tighten up. It's mostly important just to keep it here to keep your shoes tied onto your foot. So this is how I do it and I'll show you how I do it with my other shoe. First things first, in the beginning you pretty much want to just do it the same way as you normally tie your shoelaces. So you go up through here. Now I'm not going to do it perfectly just so I can get this done without too much time and I'll speed up through the boring parts. So this is where on this shoe I'll do something slightly different but I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I come up just like normal but what you do is instead of going across so it winds up pulling the shoes together you just run it to the top and then you run across. However, with my left foot, it's a little bit more tender. So what I actually like to do is go up one more time like that. So there's two spots that we would normally crisscross, but will not. So I'll just fix this though, because it's not neat. All right, so this will go across. Oh my gosh, it's all twisted up. Okay. So this will come in that way and you'll see the two sides are like that. And I'm going to go up one more time here so I can have two free spots. Then I will take this one and come under. Now I'll take this one and come under. And there you go. It's all complete. I did forget to stick it under the tongue. <laughs> you could have done it right here, but uh, that's pretty much it. And this gives you two spots and it's much more comfortable. I have found that I could wear Merrill Moab's wide shoes if I lace in this manner and it's comfortable. All the other shoes I mentioned, I really, I tried it, but it didn't work out. Just they are not wide enough, but that's it. One thing to account for when you do this, you actually wind up with laces that are much longer than you normally would. So you're gonna have to do other things for it with it. And I thought I'd show you how I tie my shoelaces. Now, watch this carefully. You start here, right? What I do is I do this and tie it. <laughs> do you like that? Let me show it to you again. What you do is you pull this loop towards you, push this loop away from you, away from you and then kind of push the two ends together and then just pull. And that's it. Now again, with these shoelaces, it's gonna be much longer. So what you wanna do is one way to avoid it hitting your legs when you're walking is to just kinda reach under here and just stuff it under here. And that often does the job. Another way you can tie your shoelaces, I'll show you a different way here, but here, let me just show you that to you one more time. Pull this one towards you, push this one away from you, push in and just grab each and pull. All right, so this is the way I always tie my shoelaces when I ran marathons and it's like double knotting, but you can actually just pull it and it comes out easily. The laces actually come out symmetrical and nice and neat. If you are really anal retentive, I guess, or <laughs> Tidy. This actually is really nice. Now what you do is you loop this, loop this, pull them across. They're kind of crossed. Pull this one through the middle and push this one through the middle. And then you just keep hold of the loops and you pull. And what you get is a knot that will never come undone. It has two loops there. So it's nice and tidy. And if you look, there's two loops and an end, <laughs> nice and symmetrical, nothing weird. And this is really nice because this will never untie on its own. So you can run like crazy. It uses up extra lace. So if your laces are long, uh, it'll use it up. If they're still long, you can still tuck it under. But the beauty of this knot compared to just double knotting is you could just pull it and it comes undone. Whereas 
if you go like this and then you double knot it, yeah, it's, you know, you have to reach down and it takes you a second to pull it and undo. So again, loop it, loop it, cross, but remember to leave a hole in the middle here so you can easily get things through. The longer you keep these loops, the easier it is. And then push this one through the hole and push this one down through the hole and pull. And there you go. Most of the through hike, I actually just tied it like this actually, because when you wear the gaiter over your shoe, it actually holds your shoelaces down. And I've never had my shoelaces come loose while the gaiter was on. So again, <laughs> just to show it to you, what I do is do the first tie and then just pull this one towards you, push this one away from you, and then just kind of push through and grab and pull. Nice, easy, and quick. I don't know if you can see the label. <laughs> They're pretty old. There is a 4E right there. That's a 9.5 4E extra wide with the green super feet inserts inside. Believe it or not, these are the exact same shoes I wore through the entire PCT. All five shoes were this exact color and model, and they actually lasted a remarkably long time. And the, ins the soles on the bottom, initially I thought they wouldn't last as long as everyone's Vibrams, but I find that it actually had more tread on it than some of the Vibrams after the same amount of miles. It just, on these A6, the cushion wind up collapsing too much, and then you wind up kind of twisting, and over time that'll lead to injury. So, but other than that, great shoes. So believe it or not, I started tying my shoelaces like that when I started running marathons, um, run it, read it in a Runner's World magazine article. That was 13 years ago, and I actually don't remember how to tie shoelaces the normal way. Like, I don't remember what people used to do. They go like this? Oh yeah, here you go. <laughs> that was my first time doing it on film too in over 13 years but i don't even know how i did that go like this oh yeah yeah okay that's it's weird so much quicker just doing this hmm. yeah did you enjoy the way i tie those shoelaces that's the way i've been tying it all along and that's pretty funny though because they actually when i try to tie it the way i used to like that was actually me trying to remember and not doing it. And then I kind of figured it out. It was weird. It's been so long since I tied them like that, but hopefully this video was helpful for some people with the extra wide feet. If you request information on Facebook, people will always, not always, a lot of people kind of not understand the question exactly. They kind of give what works for them and kind of forget the basis of the question itself. It's actually kind of odd how social media has changed things where you can ask a question and then have various words in them. But when people answer them, they just kind of answer what they know and they kind of just kind of forget the details of the question. So it doesn't really answer the official question. So hopefully that doesn't lead people astray and buying all kinds of weird things, wasting their money. But yeah, hopefully it helped out for you, all you extra wide feet people out there like me. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I have put in the links for the insoles and the shoes that I wear and I've worn many, 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 many times now. They're Amazon affiliate links. I'm sure most of you know what they are, but if you click on the links, it takes you to the Amazon webpage of the product. And if you buy through the link, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but the, we get a little percentage of it and it'll help support this channel and I can keep going on and buying more shoes with that extra money. So links below, please like and subscribe and I will talk to you later from Germany. I'm in Emden right now. Yeah, I'll talk to you later.